I just wanted to start by acknowledging uh, the tra traditional owners or custodians um, on the land of which we all meet today. Um, and I'd like to pay my respects to um, the elders past, present and emerging and also extend uh, my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people joining us today. Um, so as Vinnie said, I'm Julie Lee, Director at Spiky Pineapple. Uh, and at Spiky Pineapple, um, we offer our clients uh, bespoke coaching, uh, training, uh, in design thinking, service design through to Agile, um, and it's all designed to deliver valuable outcomes. Uh, and today I'll be sharing my experience on why injecting play helps teams and leaders um, to not only achieve agility, uh, but to go beyond and um, you know, spark innovation. So my mission, it's simple. Um, it's to bring play back for adults uh, and professional and organisa organisational learning. Um, I invite you to lean in and join me on my mission. So to start off with, um, I'd like to get everyone's thoughts on what's the first thing that comes to their mind um, when you hear the word play. Um, so you can either pop it into the chat um, or you can put it uh, into the Zoom itself. So you can do annotate. Uh, and you can just start drawing. So you can put text. Uh, so the first word, so uh, don't filter, uh, just anything that comes to mind. Okay, so I've got a few words coming through. Laughing, enjoy, fun. Kids, engaging, okay, lovely. Okay, um, next I'd like you to think about and share in the chat window again. Um, when was the last time you played? Um, who were you with? Uh, where were you? And how did you feel? And it could be the same as what you put earlier around play. Okay, we've got fun again. Okay, I'm gonna to jump to it and share a little word cloud. Um, so I've run a couple of these sessions and not surprisingly, uh, dinner last Sunday is engaging and yet challenging. Um, not surprising there's some common themes. Um, for adult play and adult learning, it has been around mainly um, team or organized group sport, entertaining, yes, thanks Lani. Um, and the social aspect and, uh, you know, drinks as well as um, the fitness fanatics put in feel-good endorphins. Uh, and for those with a competitive spirit, you know, the, the, the competition and, of course, the winning is always a bonus. Um, so why is this important? So why do we need to know this as leaders um, or people in, bar in teams embarking on agile learning or agile ways of working? So the definition of play in, in the dictionary, um, keep my cats amused, thank you, Richard. Um, it, it's got, you know, engaging in an activity uh, for enjoyment and recreation um, and not something that's serious or practical. An example here is, you know, the children playing by the pool. Uh, and as adults, my observation, my experience is we've been conditioned to view play as something that is frivolous um, and or a waste of time. Um, and in the years that I've been teaching and coaching on design thinking, agile ways of working, it's always been through an interactive or an immersive activity. Um, so why, again, is this important as a leader or in management? So as Darren shared earlier, it's, it's 20 years um, this year since, you know, agile entered the landscape, um, originally in IT and, uh, you know, there are management or leaders saying we're going to do agile. Uh, and often the real need uh, and the reason why teams and organisations need to go agile um, is because they want to remain competitive um, or to be innovative and to be an employer of choice. Uh, and this is around having leaders and teams um, have the agility to respond, to pivot or to adapt to market changes. And of course, all the while being cost-effective and productive. Now, this session isn't about uh, table tennis or foosball. 
Um, they're fun. Um, I see these tools as team bonding and playing to relax. Um, so it's not going to cover anything around, um, you know, engaging in interactivity over table tennis in ping pong um, to activate learning. Often many teams will start uh, their agile journey with uh, the marshmallow tower or Lego. Um, while these are great simulation activities, um, they're very much one-off events. Uh, and my observation experience has been you need to have that ongoing interactive reminder to make learning um, memorable and enjoyable. Uh, and this allows it to be um, translatable to practice. Um, so the, the activity that we just uh, walked through um, was all about, you know, un untapping and unlocking uh, positive emotions, um, teamwork, um, having a bit of fun, but also creative problem solving. Um, so it was collaborative and it was interactive. Um, and it's not something where uh, the, the, the learning lesson is uh, deaf by PowerPoint or eight hours of long video tutorials. Um, so as much as possible, uh, it's all about being immersive. Um, so anyone who's seen my LinkedIn posts or knows me knows that I love the iceberg metaphor. Um, so what I've done here is I've leveraged the six C's of um, childhood learning uh, from Hirsch and Mitch Nick. Um, so it's got the six C's and, and my experience has been uh, for adult and professional and organisational learning, um, culture and context is key. Um, so in terms of culture, it, it's what you need to help break that surface tension, that water surface tension, and that helps you unlock the deep learning. Uh, so without a positive learning culture in place, um, you can't have play. You can't have playful interactions and playful learning. Um, you can have content in the communication, and my view is, uh, you know, it's at points um, shallow learning. Someone can always play back what they've heard or read in a textbook, but to go to that next level deep thinking on critical thinking and also the creativity to unlock and innovate is where you need a safe environment. Um, so this leads us to the next one around um, innovation. Uh, so similar to agile, design thinking, innovation um, have been on steady rotation the last couple of years where, you know, organisations and management uh, want their teams to innovate uh, and they want to do innovation or there's innovation training. Um, and again, you know, it's not teams and, and management wanting their teams to do and uh, be agile. They actually want the agility um, that comes with the agile framework. Um, and similar again, in terms of the why, it's to remain competitive or to become more competitive um, or to launch the next big thing. And in terms of retaining top talent is to be the employee of choice. And for that, you need to be able to have an environment where your employees feel safe um, and they can explore and grow. So similar to when you um, were at high school and you did uh, chemistry experiments, you have your hypothesis at the beginning and at the end of the experiment, you always go back and you learn and unpack what went well, what didn't go well, and what would you do next? Okay. Um, this is the six C's and, and the culture key in a, in a slightly different light where at the base level and foundationally, uh, the content, whether it's agile ways of working or design thinking, can be read or learnt. So that's the theory. And then building on top of that, you know, once you have uh, created a safe culture for your team members and leadership to grow and play, um, then you can tap in and move away to the green hat. Uh, if you're interested, the green hat is um, the hat where people are able to create uh, creatively think. So why do leaders need to care? Uh, it's been proven and well-researched that positive emotions impacts people's learning and memory ability. Uh, so people feel happy and positive uh, and safe and supported, um, then they're more likely to retain what they learn. Uh, if they're feeling uh, closed down, um, attacked uh, or unsafe, um, then the chances are what they're learning or their learning experience is going to be impacted. Um, so to summarise, these are my top five takeaways. Um, so first and foremost, you need to create and actively nurture a, a learning culture. Um, so this is where your teams and your leaders feel safe and supported. 
Um, I know it's a given in culture is used quite um, frequently and, and loosely at times, uh, but this is something where it's an ongoing activity and ongoing exercise. Uh, the second one is you need to validate um, and communicate the desired outcome and the why. Um, and the third one following on that is um, have an adaptive leadership where leaders and management are also walking the talk. Um, that way, employees and, and teams will feel, um, I guess, they have permission to actually also try. Um, and from, from the trying and learning and growing experimenting um, is to see and understand what didn't work and what they could do better. So it's all around, you know, the agile iterations and reflections and retrospectives. Um, the context here is, is where it's key to um, driving the learning and the application. So it's not about the set and forget, and it's not about the theory work, but it's looking at, okay, what's the best uh, vehicle and opportunity um, to instill a, a learning session where it's interactive and immersive? And the final one is injecting play. Um, so this is where you're tapping into all your senses. Um, and in every informal or formal uh, learning opportunity, um, you're not doing deaf by PowerPoint um, and you're actually walking the talk around uh, creating that psychological safety so that play can be the vehicle um, to tap into and unleash uh, creativity. Mm -hmm.